Hi, I'm Dr. Don Bond with Personalized Wellness. Today I want to continue this talk that I've been doing on hormone replacement after menopause. And today I want to talk about progesterone replacement after menopause. We, I talked a little bit about estrogen and all the benefits that you have from estrogen. And in a later talk, I'll talk to you about delivery methods of, of estrogen and, and that sort of thing and the safety profile. But um, as you recall, estrogen is very beneficial for cardiovascular disease uh, protection in women. It also protects against dementia, protects bones, um, a lot of things estrogen does, does for the body. Today, again, I want to talk about progesterone. So progesterone for the, uh, for the uterus and the breast are kind of the yin and the yang with estrogen in that there's an antagonistic uh, role that progesterone plays with the uterus and with the breast. And that's been very important in the past because initially when, when they started giving estrogen, women that had a uterus, they quickly found out that these women would start to bleed since they were not getting progesterone. So that's how they came up with Provera or Methoxy uh, Progesterone, MPA. And that's what was used initially to antagonize this effect of estrogen. When the Women's Health Initiative came out, that's when the big issues uh, came about because in the Women's Health Initiative, Provera definitely showed an increased risk of breast cancer and it also increased clotting, it increased cardiovascular disease and stroke. So all of the bad things from the Women's Health Initiative were, were essentially from Provera or synthetic progesterone. Now the problem lies with the synthetic progesterone in that it's not the same as oral micronized progesterone. Oral micronized progesterone has the exact same chemical structure as the progesterone that you've made you know, in your body your whole life and your body reacts to it completely different than Provera. And a lot of people don't understand this. A lot of OBGYNs don't understand this. And I have a very strong feeling that women, even if they don't have a uterus, that they've had a hysterectomy, should get progesterone replacement. Like I uh, spoke about earlier, uterus and breast, progesterone acts as a, like I said, the yin and the yang. There's an antagonistic effect that progesterone has with estrogen. And it's also very beneficial for the breast to take oral micronized progesterone. And I believe it decreases your risk of breast cancer because it down-regulates the estrogen receptors in the breast. And oral micronized progesterone has been shown to be apoptotic, meaning it destroys, can destroy uh, cancer cells. So that's very, to me, very important. So I like the idea of giving oral micronized progesterone to patients, even if they have had a hysterectomy. Because I really believe there are progesterone receptors throughout the entire body. And you get benefit from progesterone in a synergistic fashion with estrogen in all of these other areas of the body. So the progesterone acts in concert with the progesterone to provide benefits in your brain, your heart, blood vessels, bone. And again, where a lot of people get hung up is in this area, especially with the heart and the blood vessels and cardiovascular disease and stroke. And as a matter of fact, I had a patient uh, in the clinic a month or so ago who's had a hysterectomy and she was asking me about getting progesterone. I told her I encouraged it, but she said that her OBGYN, the one thing he told her was to please never to get on progesterone because of how dangerous it is. And again, there's a confusion between oral micronized progesterone and synthetic progestins, micro, either um, Provera or Northendron, which is probably the most common synthetic progesterone that's used right now. And it's very common in birth control pills. There, there's a lot of uh, of this particular uh, progestin out there. So again, I really believe that progesterone has a lot of beneficial effects for women. 
It also has uh, significant effects on the brain and that it, uh, when you take it orally, it, uh, some of the metabolites from the, from the oral microdose progesterone actually hit your GABA receptors, which help alleviate anxiety and depression. So you get benefits from that also. So again, a big believer in replacing with oral micronized progesterone. My typical dose is, I, is 200 milligrams of oral micronized progesterone at night. That's been shown in studies to be protective for the, uh, for the breast and the uh, uterus. And uh, that's typically the dose that I start with, but I, oftentimes I will have to go higher. We do check blood levels to see if we're getting an adequate blood level, so I do want to make sure that that's, uh, that that's uh, taking place. And, um, you know, the half-life, and th essentially the oral microdized progesterone at uh, 200 milligrams is going to last about 18 hours. So usually one dose at night is sufficient uh, to get you through to the next night. So again, I'm Dr. Don Bonner with Personalized Wellness. Uh, we're continuing this talk on menopause and hormone replacement. We're going to have several other talks. Uh, Testosterone is going to be in the future. I want to do another uh, talk on estrogen and talk about delivery methods uh, for uh, estrogen and what I believe is the best delivery methods. And uh, please uh, hit the subscribe button below. That really helps the uh, channel out. Uh, put some comments down below. I'll answer those as uh, soon as possible. And uh, again, I'm really trying to, to make this channel as educational as possible. And uh, we're going to have other talks besides women. I will have some talk for talks for men with, uh, with hormone replacement also. So we will get to those. And again, I appreciate it. And uh, I'm Dr. Don Bonner with Personalized Wellness. Thank you.